Welcome into Box Office Quarterbacks. Uh, me and Ahmed are back at it again. How are you doing tonight, my friend, before we start talking about Prey? I'm doing great, my man. How about you? I'm doing fantastic. Um, we are talking about, I would say, one of the surprises of the year, Ahmed, in Prey. This is a great uh, year for movies that originally came out in the 80s and are getting legacy sequels or prequels if you want to uh, go that route because I, th this movie surprised the hell out of me. Um, it is the best uh, addition to the Predator franchise since the original. Um, I had just seen Predator 2 the other day and I don't ever want to see it again. But um, <laughs> yeah, what were your initial thoughts on this movie? So you went farther than I did by watching Predator 2. I just seen Predator and that was a long time ago. But to kind of fre uh, refresh myself, I watched Predator and then I watched Prey. And I'm glad I did because there were some like nods to the original Um and yeah, I uh, I think IMDb said uh, that Rotten Tomatoes had it the highest rated uh, Predator series. Um, and, you know, like you said about reboots and prequels, uh, I'm, I'm starting to get annoyed by the reboots. But this one definitely gets a pass. This is one of the rare exceptions where we see a reimagined version of a popular movie and it becomes a success and a retelling with respect to even re uh, representation to native Americans. Yeah, for sure. And the story is very, very simple. They essentially took the formula from the first movie and just kind of flipped it on its head where you have uh, the lead character in the movie played by Amber mid thunder, who's fantastic in this movie, essentially taking on the Arnold role. And then you have uh, the people in her tribe in the great plains as as the commandos and to switch it that way i thought was very very smart because the predator predators are a trophy hunter so you know they've been on earth before and they've kind of alluded to that uh in in past movies but just to make it simple and different from something like predator 2 where he's just killing people in a city or avp which is like ridiculous if you think about it just the plot of that movie and getting those two like iconic characters together i love the simplicity of this story and i think that's what really makes it stand out for me definitely there was simplicity in it but th there was still like a like you said trophy hunters um that's what the whole thing with the uh, her character amber mid thunder's character naru where she wants to kind of assert herself as a hunter and you know she's not given her credit but then at the end she's got it like she's proven herself sadly you know she loses a family member in the process but it's still like in the end the hero wins kind of like in you know the first movie uh where arnold eventually wins the battle but unlike the first movie this one, I think, has better pacing. They waited too long in the 1987 movie, and I get why they did it. It's building up to it. But with Prey, you kind of just already know who you're dealing with, and then you kind of see, but it, you kind of see who you're already dealing with, but then you see that he's more powerful than we anticipated. Like yeah. he's not the same, you know, I, I believe he doesn't even have the shoulder. Uh, gun he's like you know a rope uh, an alien version of a of a native american warrior yeah. <laughs> so it's like whoa i did not see that coming <laughs> like his, his mask looks so cool too because it's just like a buffalo skin i think on his face which makes yeah. it even cooler but yeah um i thought the predator effects obviously are better than the other movies but i thought they they use the invisibility a little bit better here. And obviously the technology is improved, but you have him killing a bear and holding the bear over his head. And then the blood is like dripping down onto him. And then that's how you see him for the first time. That yeah. is so crazy. That is so sick. Uh, just how they did stuff. And you see him fighting a bunch of different things in the forest, a snake, a bear, a wolf, um, really just, 
like digging into who's the apex predator in this movie. And I love that stuff too. And it's, it's not even fair to say a fight. It's really like he kind of gives them some mercy, but he really overpowers them. I think the bear was probably the only one that gave him a run for his money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. The bear, I think my favorite I, scenes. Yeah. So I say, let's talk about our favorite scenes. Um, obviously um that whole montage is probably going to be uh one of my favorites i did love everything with the dog <laughs> that dog was a great addition to the story and i was like dreading every time he was on screen because i love dogs so much so i didn't want anything to happen to him yeah. <laughs> but yeah i was like oh my god my wife was like look up does the dog die.com to see if the dog is okay. So I did. And I, I was able to relax for the rest of the movie, but uh, yeah, every scene with him was, was fantastic. I also loved uh, the, the scene where, um, you know, they, they confront the, the predator in the forest for the first time. It's the, the tribe of native Americans and he is just taking them out. It's so crazy. Oh, yeah. Um, and then Amber Midthunder's character gets away. Uh, Naru gets away, and it's crazy how she kind of escapes. And um, it's mostly because she uh, tripped on a bear trap, and the predator didn't see her as a threat anymore. I love that sequence as well. Yeah, um, that that uh, oh, the dog man. <laughs> yeah, same thing. My wife said she didn't even watch the whole movie. She watched like a little bit of it, but even she was just like, "Oh my god, I hope nothing happens to the dog." <laughs> so. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I, I loved, you know, the bear scene, that fight scene with the uh, Predator and the Native American tribe. But I really, really loved seeing the Frenchman getting killed. <laughs> you see? Yes. Like, and I'm sorry for our French viewers, French listeners. Uh, this has nothing to do with any sort of bias, even though you know, you guys colonized my father's people. <laughs> I'm just saying, but, but, um, just, just, they had guns and he had axes and not, and like all this other stuff, but the guns weren't able to take him out. And it was just, wild. they trapped him at one point, but he, I don't know. He has some sort of, uh, re relapse where he's able to put the net on them. And then it becomes like made of metal. So they die slowly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, just everything about that scene. Just powerful. Uh, he, he like kind of cheats a little bit. I'm not going to lie in all these movies. He has invisibility on his side. So he is at an unfair <laughs> advantage to everybody else. Like if you want to go mano y mano, take that invisibility cloak off my man. Let's fucking do it. Yeah, he did. That's exactly what he did in the fight with Tabe, which was another favorite scene where he's like circling around him. That was another like amazing scene. But then when they do the hand to hand comment, he goes invisible. I'm like, oh, so you're just gonna you're just gonna hide like a like a coward? Come on, <laughs> fight like a man, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, but, uh, all the scenes were good though. Yeah, like I, I would say the final fight scene is fantastic as well because you see uh, what Naru has been working on and she uses like her tracking skills and everything she observed about the predator throughout the movie to kill him, where she drags him into that, that deep mud, that kind of quicksand stuff from earlier. And then mm -hmm. she uses the helmet against him where uh, like the laser vision is shooting at the side of his head and then it tricks him. I really love the ending and the dog gets involved. The dog bites the predator. I'm like, hell yeah, that good is a boy. good boy. That is a <laughs> yeah. good boy right there. Good boy of the year for sure. <laughs> so uh, I love the final fight scene. Um, and I would say keep a close watch of the end credits as well, because there is a story in the animation that kind of yeah. can set up where we might be going next. Definitely. Um, I want to touch back on that thing you mentioned, the, the final fight scene that where Naru is kind of like in the corner and she says, do it. That is a callback to the first Predator movie where Arnold is like, 
you know, he's got the trap ready and he's like, do it, kill me. This is, <laughs> this is a great opportunity for me to do an Arnold Schwarzenegger impression, but I'm not going to try it. Um, but oh, you, you already started, buddy. You go all in, uh, go all in. Do yeah. it, kill me, do it. <laughs> get, get to the get chopper. To the chopper. <laughs> Stick around. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I didn't mean to do that viewers. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, no, it was a lot of callbacks, and that was, like, the best callback. Uh, but this one ended the way it, we wanted it to, um, where she does, like, you know, win in the end. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I think, you know, we've gone over a lot of scenes that we liked. I, I think we could probably get into our favorite characters of this movie. Um, Nara's going to be number one. I think the actress who plays her Amber mid thunder is a star in the making 100%. And I hadn't seen her in anything before this. I guess she was in the, uh, Roswell, New Mexico reboot show on the CW, which I did not watch. Um, and then her, her brother, I I would say is number two for me. Uh, he's great. Just like a kind of great foil to, to her. The dog's going to be number three because the dog (laughs) is fantastic. He is uh, just one of the best characters in this movie. Four is going to be the actual Predator. I think this is the scariest the Predator has been in a long time on screen. Because, you know, the AVP movies kind of turned them into anti-heroes, which I didn't really like. So I like to see the Predator as a threat again. Uh, Five, I think, uh, I'll go with Naru's mom. I thought the little scenes that we got with her were great. And I would have liked to see seeing a little bit more of her. So that's where I would stand. That's interesting. You say the mom. Um, I, I actually didn't have five characters uh, planned, uh, but I will put number five as her mom. Um, but number one for the for the sake of being different, I'll say Predator. I, I initially had Naru as my first favorite character, but Predator was was badass. And that's shocking to say coming out of my mouth because he is very frightening, but just hit his movements. uh, The actor that, you know, played him just did an amazing job with just making him kind of a badass. Uh, And he was just very frightening, very fearsome, but like just, wow. You know, Um, Naru's definitely number two star in the making. I was really impressed by, you know, her fearlessness as well. You know, she didn't really take any crap from anybody. Um, Whenever her brother's friends were kind of like treating her like a child, she was very like, (laughs) there's that scene where they're going to hunt the lion and her brother's friend is like, me and my brother will be the ones to blah, blah, blah. And right when he's talking all that smack, a lion just attacks him. like, (laughs) Like, yeah, see, that's what happens. That's yeah. what happens. You keep talking, you <laughs> let your guard down, and this is what happens. So, <laughs> uh, Tabe, uh, for sure, <coughs> number three, um, he was a great uh, character as a brother, but also uh, he, he was like an awesome warrior. Um, that fight scene, again, with him and the Predator, where he's like circling around like a horse, just wow. And then, you know, of course, his death, you know, probably one of the one of the most tragic uh, death scenes I've seen in a movie in a while. Um, and we've already said number five was uh, her mom. Number four, the dog. That dog yeah. is the definition of a ride or die friend. <laughs> you know, makes me want to have a dog. I've got two cats. Only one of them will probably fight for me. <laughs> That's about it. But and it's not the boy cat. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> it's not the boy cat. <laughs> yeah, I mean that dog's a star in the making too. You want to make an Airbud reboot? Put that dog in it. There Dude. we go. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see Airbud fight the predator. <laughs> oh my God! Yes. I do want Air Bud to fight the Predator. Uh, Which brings us to our next segment is who do you want to see fight the Predator next? Because in this movie, obviously he went back to 1719 uh, in the Great Plains against the Comanche Warriors. Uh, I was talking to to Ahmed before the show, and I said that I would like to see the Predators fight samurai in Japan. I just think that would be so sick because they have 
you know, all that armor and all that kind of uh, culture there, I think that they could go toe to toe with him pretty well. What about totally. you? Totally. Like now that you say that, that does make a lot of sense. I actually didn't really, th- whenever you were saying, you know, th- which character would we want to see? I'm like, do we get free range on this? Cause I'd kind of want to see him fight John wick. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're both unkillable. And you know, I heard one time uh, he killed three men in a bar with a pencil. You know, let's see the predator do that. Yeah. <laughs> Balls in your um, court, Predator. I kind, yeah. you know, uh, let's see. Also, you know, if as technology grows, could he fight like robots? You know, is that a stretch? Oh. Or was, is that going to be really cheesy to kind of see him I fighting robots? Idea. Oh yeah, well, I want to hear this. What if we put the Predator and Terminator and RoboCop and Alien in the same, all in the same movie? It's like a battle royale of all four of those things and you let them fight and then you see who comes out the winner. I will pay extra the, the ticket price at the movie theaters to see that movie. Arnold Schwarzenegger has to be in the movie and he has to say, get to the choppa and he has to win. (laughs) Yes. That's just, that's the only way this movie can be made. That's the only way people will be happy is if Arnold Schwarzenegger wins, then he can retire from acting and do whatever the hell he wants. <laughs> <laughs> and then you throw in the Fast and the Furious family at the end in the post credit scene. And then <laughs> here we go. We are off and rolling. We wrote half this movie. So uh, that's, that is an idea for anybody who wants it. If it bleeds, it, we can kill it. And no blood is thicker than family. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Universal, how are you not green lighting this right now? <laughs> oh man, we should get producer credits for this too. Universal, yeah. if you're we're not listening. doing this for free, this ain't free. We we got bills to pay. Okay, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. All right, but um, I say we get into our our final scores. I think I'm gonna go with a hot take with this one. I like this movie a lot. I watched it twice over the weekend and I watched the original Predator and Predator 2 to kind of compare them. I think this is the best Predator movie ever made. I think the story is great. I think the technology has gotten so much better since 1987. Like it doesn't look cheesy when the Predator is running through the forest invisible. So I'm going to give this a very high all star. And I say it's the best Predator movie ever made. You know, I was hesitant to give it an all-star, but everything you said makes me, you know, think that this is the right decision. I'm not a huge sci-fi fan. Uh, I don't know if I'd put it on the watch again list. And that's not to take credit away from the film. It's just I'm not a sci-fi buff. But you're right. It is one. It is really good pacing. The acting is phenomenal. Uh, I'm a huge advocate for representation and just all that combined was just yeah i think it deserves the all-star rating for sure yeah it's it is fantastic i mean if you listen to the first 18 minutes of this review you could kind of gather what we've said about it i mean don't listen to our reviews unless you you haven't seen the whole movie but uh or you do you it's up to you the only flaw i guess i had and it's not really a flaw I was hoping whenever they were speaking in uh, the Comanche dialect, um, we didn't get any subtitles for that. And yeah. uh, even when they were speaking French, we didn't get any subtitles for that. I was really hoping to kind of know what they were saying. Um, but some of the trivia I was reading was they're doing a remake of this movie where it's going to be dubbed in Comanche. Uh, and it's going to be like, like their movie. And to which, whenever I hear that, I'm like, okay, yeah, we don't, they, we don't, we don't need subtitles. This is not my movie. This is for them. Yeah, let them have it. That is really cool that they're doing that, though. Um, and I think there is like a a Comanche dub that you can put on Hulu. I think that's yeah. like, uh, yeah, that's on there. So I mean, it's great, and like seeing like a Native American lead as as the main character in this movie was so cool to see. It's just like awesome uh, that we're we're getting this, and I thought she she like was one of the best heroes, original heroes we've gotten in a long time. So, I mean, keep them coming. If you want to do a sequel, uh, set 
in this same time period with her coming back, I'd be a hundred percent down for that as well. You know, Jeff, it's funny you mentioned, so we're both on the same page that we like the movie and everything. Um, I kind of wonder, this is the f- only predator movie that was not like, you know, in the theaters, it was exclusively available for stream. Do you think that would hurt the box office or how much money it would make? I think because there was a predator movie that came out in 2018, which kind of bombed in theaters because it was there and it was gone the, the next weekend. So I do think that they did make the right move in putting this on streaming because I don't know how much of a box office it would have made. But I think for the future of this franchise, that it definitely should return to theaters. Yeah, if we can, you know, because I, I would have loved to see it on a bigger screen. Yeah. Um, you know, IMAX even, you know, I had a pretty decent sized TV in my living room, but um, just uh, it would have been cool to just have that movie theater experience. Yeah, for sure. Um yeah, watching it on my little 32 inch in my bedroom didn't do it as much justice as it could have for sure. But yeah, put the next one on the big screen. I think people will come out for it after after uh, the positive word of mouth. But uh, yeah, Ahmed, we, we got a lot of stuff to talk about uh, coming up. Uh, we have She-Hulk to talk about. That's coming out in a few weeks. Um, um, Game of Thrones, that prequel is coming out. I know Gerald will probably want to talk about that as well. Uh, anything else you want to add before we get out of here? We'll be back. <laughs> oh, and that's a tease to the, the Battle Royale Predator <laughs> movie that we're doing. <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah this is another fun awesome. episode. Uh, for Ahmed, I'm Jeff. Check out our website, boxofficeqbs.com. Like and subscribe on YouTube. Find us on Twitter, on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, we will see you guys very, very soon. And we hope you guys have a fantastic week.